Hello. I'm, Hello. I'm uh, delighted to, to, to have uh, Gary Young with us today. For uh, all those that are, that are interested in Bulgaria, I, I need a, a brief explanation why Gary uh, accepted to, to, to talk to us. Uh, I mean, first of all, Gary is, is a famous British journalist. He's spent uh, 25 years uh, with, with the Guardian newspaper, half of those uh, in the US. He has written uh, five books. Um, uh, so so uh, this is, this is a, a, a story of uh, 10 children being killed on the same day. I, I very much recommend this book. In, in, this is the story about the, the life of families and, and why children continue being, being murdered in, in, in the US. This is a book about uh, the famous uh, speech of uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, and, 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 and this is the book which is, brings us closer to our conversation where Gary has managed to uh, write about different, I would allow myself to say, idiosyncrasies in different societies and, and the, the contradictions of ethnicity and perhaps his understanding of, of the future of, 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 these, complex, of these complexities. Uh, now, uh, is, Gary, you would you would correct me, but as far as I understand, you 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 have two kids, and you now live in, That's in, right. in now in, you now live in London. I now live in London. Uh, I lived in America for twelve years, but I'm back in London now. Uh, sh sh I, I will I will come back to you. I just just one more introductory comment. Uh, th this is the this is the article that that you wrote or you published. Uh, Two Ooh. three weeks ago, I mean, I, I think in, on the paper edition of the Guardian, it was probably published the first of June or something, and then in the in That's the digital right. edition, I recommend everyone that would dare to listen to our interview to to afterwards read this article. Um, and and my last introductory comment is about this event, uh, which is most Bulgarians would know about this. Some people that are interested in Bulgaria would know about this. This is a um, drawing. Or painting of a uh, monument, which is uh, so-called monument of the Red Army in the center of Sofia, and these are obviously comics figures. And where it is really fantastic that we have the interview today, it is exactly the tenth anniversary of this being painted and and then cleaned by uh, by the the mayor of Sofia. So essentially, uh, the, the the subject matter is of is monuments. Uh, would you I mean to start? Would you would you be so kind to? To tell us a bit about yourself, uh, maybe where where you sure. come from, where your family comes from, and yeah. maybe some words about your kids, so that we try to project them to the future and not think about the past. So um, I uh, was born in Britain. Uh, my parents are from Barbados, in the Caribbean. Um, I studied uh, French and Russian at university, uh, and then became a journalist and uh, wrote all over the world mostly uh, Europe, Africa and the Caribbean, and then in 2003, went to America for 12 years. And that's where my children were born. Uh, and then I returned from America in um, 2015, uh, continued as an editor at large for The Guardian until last year when I became a professor of sociology at the University of Manchester. And Coming back to your to your kids, do you do you feel that they would they they, they have a chance to live in a better world or, or it's questionable? You mean their future? Yes. Um, I think some things will be better and many things will be worse. You know, I think um, any future generation comes closer to climate change apocalypse and um, closer to not necessarily arrives at. Uh, and they will have to live with that. Um, um, racism isn't going anywhere. They will have to live with that. Um, and at the same time, I am wealthier than my mother. My mother was wealthier than her grandmother. Uh, I hope maybe that my children will materially will be more comfortable uh, uh, than I am. Um, what that material comfort can do for you in, in, <laughs> in a world with uh, um, you know, this falling apart is a different matter, but there's everything to fight for. 
So uh, I, I hope so. And I hope that they are part of fighting for the kind of world that would, um, uh, that would be better, not just for them, but for everybody. For uh, Well, basically, you, 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 you see the, the original, oh, sorry, the, the real size of, of the, the monument just, just behind me. Uh, this mm. is the Soviet monument. By, by the way, Zdravstvujte uh, uh, and bonjour. Is, 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 I mean, <laughs> most people might have misheard the fact that, that you, you both obviously speak Russian and, and French. Uh, so c c coming back to the... Bonjour. bonjour. The, 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 the monument issue, um, one thing which we, we really need to explain to those watching us who might not have read your, your piece or, or might some many people don't like reading anymore. Um, uh, the issue of, of, of monuments. Now, th this, this monument was erected in, in uh, uh, 1954, and uh, there, has been, uh, there has been a constant debate about moving it or destroying it in the last 30 years. Um, this monument celebrates the end of the war between, um, between the Soviet Union and Bulgaria, because Soviet Union was not at war with Bulgaria until the 5th of September uh, 1944, and then occupied Bulgaria for a couple of years um, or more. Uh, and so there are still families that feel unhappy about it and, and people who have very strong feelings, anti-communist feelings, uh, that believe this monument is uh, celebrating, on the one hand, foreign occupation, and on the other hand, the, the, the communist period. So you, having mm. studied Russian, you, you must have some understanding of this. But what is the, the most important is, is for you, or for, rather for our audience, to tell us why you think that statues uh, should, I mean, would be better off removed and not erected anymore? Right. And, and here I'm going to uh, make a distinction um, uh, between statues and monuments that... Um, Please do. In particular, the statues of people in particular, I think, um, whether they're people I like or people I don't like, I think are deeply flawed. I think that um, they're a very good way of forgetting people, actually, of you covered in cement, you put them up high, um, you ask most ordinary people, do you know who that is? They don't. Um, I, think, I, I think that statues are not symbols of history, but symbols of reverence. When you put a statue of a person up, you're not just saying they did something, you're saying I like what they did. Um, and that's always a problem if they did something really awful. And um, in America and Britain and elsewhere in Europe, we have a lot of statues to people who were heavily involved in the slave trade and the worst aspects of colonialism. But, you know, even the people who I do like and I do admire, people like Nelson Mandela or Rosa Parks or um, uh, Oluwadu Equiano, or, um, uh, abolitionist or um, uh, the suffragettes in 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 Britain, um, people who fought for women's equality, or even the people I do like, I actually think it's a poor way to honour them. And so the argument I made in the piece is actually let's take them all down. In Britain, there is an argument about whether we should take down the most egregious those with a poor rate, you know, bad racial history, particularly after Black Lives Matter. But my argument is actually, we'd be better off without statues of people at all. They're not history. They elevate the individual over the moment. Uh, they revere rather than engage. And it's a real nonsense, the idea that once a statue is up, it must never be touched. It can never come down. It can never be engaged with. Our understanding of history changes. Our interpretation of events changes. And statues don't brook change. You put them up and they stay there. That's what they do. I do think the monuments are slightly different, um, but I, I still think the monuments are open to contestation. The notion that because 
the monument is there, it must always be there, uh, is a folly. And I think there are respectful and engaged ways of dealing with this. That, um, um, first of all, whatever you do should be accountable democratically, if possible. But then I think these statues, if they're taken down, they should be put in a museum. So people can see them in their in in the, in a kind of correct habitat. I don't think sort of like burning books. I don't think they should. Um, um, uh, I don't think that uh, they should be annihilated. But um, it's um, and there are actually parts to statues in India, uh, in Hungary. I think has one mm -hmm. uh, in India. It's the old colonial statues. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there are imaginative and inventive things that we can do rather than just stick up a big lump of cement, uh, uh, call it history, and then ask everybody to bow down to it. So uh, I, just, just a brief intermezzo is that the monuments in the communist world for ideological reasons, because they were, they, I think they, they, they had this fruitful understanding of the future and of the world deep personalized. It, personalization came later. There are loads of statues of Lenin, even in Bulgaria standing, and other dignitaries. But the monument you, you see, uh, mm. in a sense, had the same role as a monument in the UK uh, or, or, or Trafalgar Square when it was built, mm. because it was much more personalized. So in a sense, in, I, I wouldn't have asked you to talk about it if, if, I, if I didn't think that monuments in our context are very much closer to statues in the, in the UK or US mm. or, or French context. Um, would you tell us a bit about, um, about your role on this uh, Trafalgar Commission? I, I don't know what their exact name was, but because there, uh, there are similar efforts to, to use um, uh, empty um, pedestals or, or piers or what's the name uh, in, in, in Bulgaria, but it's, it's very interesting. You narrate the story in, in your article, but would you tell us a, just a few words about it? Yes. So in Trafalgar Square, which is right in the center of London, there is Nelson's column, very tall column with Lord Nelson at the top. And then around him, there are four uh, basins, plinths, mm. they're called. Mm. Four basins, equestrian plinths, so for, for people on horseback. And when they were building the, that square, um, they, put, um, uh, they put notable colonial murderers, really, or, and one of George IV, on three of the plinths, um, Lord Havelock, uh, Lord Napier, and George IV. And then they ran out of money. And so the fourth plinth was left empty. Uh, when the London got a new mayor, uh, a left winger called um, Ken Livingston, he asked me if I would sit on a commission that was going to decide, Parliament had decided that there would be rotating works of modern sculpture on this plinth, the empty one. And he asked me, would I sit on the commission that would work out how to commission these pieces of work? which I was happy to do. Then the Queen Mother died. An opportunistic politician said, I know we should put her on the plinth. And then a very right wing uh, newspaper, a paper that supported Hitler during the Second World War, um, uh, realized that um, actually didn't support, they didn't support Hitler, they supported um, the British fascists. In this, uh, before the Second World War, well, the, 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 the um, royal, the, the part of the royal family was also supporting Hitler. So, UK fascists were really dangerous. Uh, they were yes, they were, um, and they said um, we we should save this piece of modern uh, uh, of our heritage from this black left wing lunatic. That was me. <laughs> um, and all of these artsy people who are out of touch with what is going on in the real, you know, Narod, Volk, <laughs> yeah. uh, Le Peuple, 
-hmm. and um and it turned out actually that um people did not want the queen mother on that plinth so that campaign failed but what became apparent was that whenever anything happened people would say david beckham would score a goal or naomi campbell would be on the cover of something and people would say we should have her on the plinth or him on the plinth and i would say to people if you can name the people on the other three plinths on the other three the other three statues if you can name who is on the other three statues you can have the fourth one because of course they never could and then i would say oh. so why would you like to put someone up there to be forgotten these are clearly not good ways of remembering people you put them up there and you guarantee they will be forgotten the only plinth that we are talking about is ironically the one that's empty that's the only one that's sparking debate and conversation so when people say well we must never forget and um this is part of our history actually what you see is this is not a great way to remember actually you are, you are no longer on that commission or it doesn't exist any longer well i went to america um okay so that was prior uh, to that yeah. right 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 mm. just to just to, to add to what you told us it, it's very interesting because the, the 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 space in front of the monument that i'm showing uh, is now a sort of playground for skaters and and and, uh, and uh, people uh, making exercises on on these uh, bikes and so on and it's it's mm. very interesting because when you ask any of them what does this monument represent? They would generally say, ah, this is to the liberation of Bulgaria uh, in the end of the 19th century by the, by the Russian army. They don't recognize this as related to the end of the Second World War, which is in a way mm. the fact that young people don't really know what, why this was erected and what the purpose is. Uh, just be before, before we end, I, I can't resist the, the, the temptation to, to ask a, a rather political question, because I, I mm -hmm. saw you suggesting some, some major, major uh, steps in, in US policy. Um, and I, I just want to ask you whether, after having suggested those, whether you feel the US government is coming closer to your understanding or not. Just to tell people my, my recollection, one was a sort of Marshall Plan for, for very poverty-ridden, areas in, 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 in U.S. cities. The second was a sort of, I would say, Medicare, but the general system of, of support for medical care and universal health care. And now suddenly the, the third elapsed me. But do you feel that these policies that you would have introduced into the U.S., uh, um, the current administration is moving in, in this direction or, or you, 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 don't, you don't feel that? With the current administration moving in that direction, yes, but not at any kind of pace that would mean that they would get there anytime soon. I mean, um, I see my role both as a, a as a journalist and now as an academic. First of all, to say what I think, I'm fettered from, you know, with uh, I'm fettered from the confines of being an elected official or whatever, but also to kind of shift the discussion along. Uh, so when I say, I think all the statues should be taken down, I don't think all the statues are gonna be taken down anytime right. soon. Right. I do mean it, right. but, um, uh, but so I wouldn't say anything I didn't believe, but I put these things forward as a provocation. Um, you know, wh but why just, don't we just think just about to ca it? Carry on from your, your forecast, when I asked you about your, your, your children, if, you've, if, you, if we were to focus on, on the US, do you feel that the current uh, significant separation in US society will improve or, or, or not in the next 10, 20 years? In the next 10, 10 or 20 years, it will get worse. It will get worse. I think. I think so. Thank because, you, Gary. Um, Thank you, Gary. I think that, I mean, we, we, we would have to, this is, this is a very significant answer. Thank you very much. I, I really, really appreciate you, 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 you accepting our invitation. Just one question to my editor. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank 
my editor, of course, Boyko Bochev, and uh, the other gentleman who is helping with Vasil Bochev, and of course, the inspirator of, of, the, of this Visible Invisible series, uh, Kalin Manolov, who, who <laughs> Bulgarian context is, 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 is somewhat, you have the same in the UK, but he's now running for parliament. But I wish all the best to, to uh, Kalin Manolov, whatever, whatever he becomes, he's a journalist. So the, the issue of him mm. becoming a, a member of parliament is, is not my prime, uh, I mean, I would prefer him to continue to be a journalist. Anyway, I wish him all the mm -hmm. best as well. But just to ask Boyko, uh, considering uh, the, the, uh, the Facebook's behavior in, in, in the way we know it behaves, are we going to wait until Saturday or we can publish earlier? You, you insist on publishing despite the, the, the nastiness and, and idiocracy in the idiocy of Facebook. Okay, so we'll be on, on Facebook uh, all for, all for the audience and, and for, for Mr. Young. Once again, thank you very much. And I wish you as thank well you. all the best and your family. And let's hope some of your, some of your expectations are turned somewhat to the better. But this, this, is, this is just a, I, 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 I'm, I'm asking whoever I, I might listen to, to us. Anyway, all the best. Thanks very much, Martin. Thank Take you. Care. And I, I would love to I... keep in touch. Bye-bye.